All right, here we are. Yep, my name is Ryan Lambert. And I'm Andre Gower, Squadcast. And we actually have a special guest today, our very first guest on Squadcast. Um, introduce yourself. This is an honor to be the first guest, and, and I think it's an honor. Oh wow! Yeah. Don't wait. Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> well, well, you did before we started recording. They did knight me with a sword, which was I thought a little bit, ex, you know, a little bit excessive. And you started with an eye. Wait, you see that was no sword. Wait, we see. Wait, you see what we do with the sword. I thought later. it was That's, weird that I had right. to close my eyes when I, when I fell out. Uh, yeah, I'm, we have the photos. Yes, my name is Ken Reed. I'm a, I'm a guy. I'm just a guy. You are you are. No, don't to cut yourself short. <laughs> so Ken, so you you do your bio. Tell, tell us where you're from and okay. what you do, and okay. then because um, you you have a fun podcast yourself, and so you tell about that. Okay, I am from Boston. I'm a stand up comedian, and I also have a podcast called TV Guidance Counselor that both of these gentlemen have kindly appeared on as well, uh, where we look through old ep- issues of TV Guide and talk about the television we watched or that we're on, we were on in some cases, like you guys. Uh, <laughs> this is true. Uh, this yep. is true. Yeah, and so it's, it's kind of creepy. Ken travels the country with a trunk load of TV guides. Yes, and then you pulls one out that you're in. So you're yeah. like, this is really fun. Yeah, that is not <laughs> but that's not how I met you guys. That would be extra yeah. weird if I was just driving around LA, like flipping through, being like, "That's the guy." <laughs> that's Page fifty-two, nineteen eighty-four. Yeah. Is this Night Rider? <laughs> I had a friend who was in a in a band and looked exactly like uh, Al from Happy Days, which is just to set <laughs> yep. the scene. Yeah, and he was yeah, walking yeah, down yeah, Lansdowne yeah. Street in Boston. And he had a copy of like our free local alternative paper, and Liz Fair was on the cover. Oh, and. He was walking by where all the music venues are, and she was playing that night. He has no clue who she is. She walks out of her, the bus, and he goes, Oh, hey, you're on my fucking paper. Will you sign my paper? And she's like, okay. And then he was, like, asking us who this person was. But just because she was on it, he was like, sign this. It, That's really That funny. was very Smart. adept of him to yeah. realize yeah. and be like, hey, get this signed. Because yeah. it could have been someone else Yeah, and you, that and people th- care about. This woman's that. just like, this this just guy asked me to sign a picture of Liz Fair today. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. your format for the, for, your, for your podcast, you know, how how closely do, do you stick to Because I know we didn't really yeah, we kinda free, go for free it. Fun. The way yeah. that, and I kind of, you know, in, in retrospect, I felt bad because I'm like, did I, do, I didn't do the thing that, that his no. podcast does. Like, It's like going on a game show and like, you know, Jeopardy. Wait, you're, you're telling gonna... me that you were doing something and then went off the rails in the total tangent? <laughs> well, that's not you're... like me. I thought it was where we, I thought it was where we brought the xylophone out, but I was like, that's just his way. That's how he does it. Um, no, it's it's not like a totally strict format. Mostly, so the strictest format is someone picks an actual issue, they write down exactly what they're going to watch that week, and right. then we talk about their choices. But on the other end of the spectrum, it's you know we just kind of chat about general stuff and then some hybrid in, in the middle there, um, because I think. Even though there's 52 issues a year for whatever years, the same shows were kind of on in groups. So if I did the strict format every single time, right. I think I'd run out of stuff to talk about okay. pretty quickly. Sure. Uh, sure. Plus, some people just, it's way too much like homework and they freak out and they're like, I, I don't think, want to write anything down. I think I froze. Yeah. Like when you emailed me, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Or I kind yeah. of walked, when I think when I walked in, I just kind of. Looked at uh, a few. I kind of flipped through a few. Yeah, just, just jog your memory. Refresh my memory of what was going on in that time and that era. Yeah, it's like more of an excuse just to have uh, <clears throat> have something to talk about for that stuff. Now I'm almost thinking as I, I think everybody that's listening to this knows who the fuck a TV guy is. Yeah. Well, no, a lot of a lot of people I, younger don't. I mean, that don't. No, I know, but I think everybody yeah. listening to this. But so if you don't know, TV Guide was a small magazine that was put out. Weekly, weekly, not yeah. monthly. Every Wednesday, weekly, and it, different markets had different TV guides, yeah. right? Yeah, because not every region or market played the same programming, right? So, so there was a gigantic publishing type of thing. It was the largest print run of any publication in history. It was the most published magazine ever, which is why you can buy them really cheap now. Because <laughs> right. there's tons of them. Because it's, it's yeah, it's and amazing. it's kind of interesting because it was you know when I'm I'm a big like anti. I don't want to say like anti-corporate person, but like for sprawl and where like people buy up these little companies, the prime examples are like beer brewery, breweries, uh, soda companies, WWE and TV guide, because all those companies <laughs> bought regional little versions of those companies and made them one big company and got rid of the regionalness. Oh. So like uh. Coca-Cola owns like, 
Kickapoo Joy Juice or whatever. They would buy all these local regional sodas just because they wanted the plant, right. but they'd have to buy the, the soda as well and then right. never make it. No, they would just make Coke in <laughs> yeah. that region. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is um, very weird. So, because yeah. well, um, I, I, re- I mean, I'm old enough to have read it. I, I kind of was obsessed with it. I kind of liked the fall preview or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. That was the best one. Dude, that was showed, great. All, showed all the new shows that are coming out. Um, when did it switch? Because it's they still have it. I it's mean, like it's Entertainment still, Weekly now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still buy it, like, yeah. but it's not the same. Obviously, the format. When did that switch? It split into three companies in the late '90s. So it split into TVGuide.com, TV Guide Channel, which is pop now, and the TV Guide Magazine. And when it split, they made they started printing it more as that large format, which still has a grid in it, which makes no sense. Yeah. There's no regionalness in it anymore. And uh, it's just sort of, I don't even know why it's still published. Because the TV Guide actually had really good writers and some really in-depth, interesting, like, analysis no, of shows. They would do critiques and reviews, yeah. and then they would do feature stories, yep. and they'd always have a cover story, right? Yeah. Like, now, it was in the core of it. Oh, yeah. And it would be well-written. And I they, was never on a cover. I was on no. photos inside. Yeah. And, and ads. Cover. Well, the cover was Damn a it. prestigious spot. And they would commission art for the cover. Like, someone to paint a cover. Right. Or, draw a cover which no one would do now i always joke that like if you were an actor in the 70s you probably have a garage full of commissioned paintings of yourself from like <laughs> instead of sending photos they would just be like we had an artist doing oil and you can have it <laughs> like an amstel color okay, we're, i gotta we're, get another painting we're done with this yeah yeah <laughs> we're not gonna do anything really. you're so lax with last week's issue yeah so like because you've been doing your podcast for like what's who's the kind of craziest or raddest or neatest guest that you've had on your podcast that like actually su- either surprised you or was just the story to tell yeah i mean it's it's tough because i've done i've had i counted when i did my 150th episode <laughs> how many guests i've had and i had like almost 200 guests in 150 episodes so i yeah. had like probably close to 250 now so you and i are not that special you right? are though like i we're can't not, we're two of 200 we're two of 200 but i yeah. cannot believe the people that i've gotten to meet and talk to of you know i grew up in boston there's nothing there i was in the i was in the little suburb watching all this stuff as like my escape and to be able to like talk to people who were like my salvation of stuff i was watching mm-hmm. blows me away is never lost on me every time i talk to somebody um, yourselves included, but like tonight we I, I did a comedy show and like you guys were there. Olivia Dabo was there was on my show earlier. Yeah, you know, it was, we was such a weird thing. thing. So yeah. she did. She, did she was on the show. So that's yeah. why she came tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for for the listeners, we were at a comedy night show, uh, and Ken's a, a, a very funny stand up comic. Okay, so you. check out a show if you're in the area. But um, uh, it was at this collectibles comic book store yeah, yeah. called Blast from the Past in. Uh, in Burbank, and uh, it's a, it's this cool little store, and it, they have comedy night there yeah, now, which yeah. is because Ryan and I were talking in the car that comedy night's different now. Like it's you can have a comedy different. night in a comic book store, and Ryan's like, "No, comedy night is in a shitty bar, yeah. with like one light and like a guy on stage, and it needs to be a right." In yeah, well, that's <laughs> that alt com. Yeah, that alt com boom was less about the content of the comedy and more about the venue. The, so yeah. when so like Largo kind of started that out here, which was a music venue that didn't do comedy, and they started mixing that stuff with the comedians. I, I remember the Largo that. now on the stage, but the original Largo was up the street on Fairfax, right, right. and like Monday night at the Largo, yeah. used to be like established comics trying out new material, right? But yeah, was but not a comedy venue. Well, no, it was I, not a comedy I, venue. I no, it was to, a, yeah, my fa- one of my favorite artists, uh, you know, in the nineties was Grant Lee Phillips, yeah, uh, from Grant Lee Buffalo, Buffalo yeah. and him and and Michael Penn. And they used to play acoustic shows at Largo. Um, but in between their sets, there was comedians that would go up. And I'm like, yeah. what is this? this so this was, this was so. This was a long time ago. This was, I think, before. I mean, maybe this, this would have been early the, 90s, this, probably. Yeah, this, not earlier. Like maybe 94, like, 95. Yeah, like maybe like mid-90s or something. And uh, it was very, I, I can't remember her name, but she was always there. Um Mary Lynn uh, Rice Cub. Right, yep. Yeah. She all was, the Mr. Show people. All the Mr. Show people were there. They always do like a, a quick set in between yep. uh, musical sets. And Which, it was incredible. It's a really old style of con- I mean, that's burlesque and vaudeville. vaudeville right. 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 Yeah, it totally, when, when stand up became that big boom we had in the 70s, which is what most people in America are like, what's the deal with kind of stand up? Totally squashed all that. And then it's funny that the alt rooms was just kind of bringing back that older style. But you had like Patton and Amy Mann, who was yep. married to Michael Penn, yep. and like all, and who still does comedy stuff with those people. 
Um, and that was sort of when it started in these like alternative venues that weren't comedy clubs. So like at a bookstore, like I work at a coffee shop. Let's do a comedy night right, here. Right. We have uh, singer songwriters on Tuesdays, and we yeah, have comics on Wednesdays. Yeah, and, and karaoke on Thursdays. And that kind of took the power away from a lot of the clubs, which right. had this sort of passing system, and was really hard for people to crack into because it's very political. So people could sort of build their own stuff without having to play that weird game of like, I want to make the owner happy of this club. But in that aspect, that's a good thing, for yeah. especially for the people that want to get on stage or mic. Because yeah. in that old kind of guard, old guard mentality, then you'd have to go to some shitty bar with an open mic night. Yeah. Like we're, yeah. And, and pass, sign up and be the 28th person. Yeah. Or list. do bringers, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else who does anything other kind of arts other than comedy... When you tell them about a bringer show, they're like, what the hell is that? Explain it's, that. It's pay to play where basically they're like, you can get on stage. I don't care how good or bad you are at this. I don't even need to see you do comedy. If you get 10 paying people to come in right. here, you can have 10 minutes of stage time. And it's such a wrong way to do anything. And it's they try to sort of make it in like music and stuff now too where they'll be like, you have to pre-buy 100 tickets to well, the we show. Well, we used to do that in bands, bands, right? Yeah, we used to do yeah. that at the Whiskey. Oh, the whiskey used yeah. to do that? Yeah, if yeah, you buy ten whiskey. people, then you would you don't have to pay no, for yourself. No, they, they would say, you can play here, but we're going to give you 40 tickets that you buy. You buy 40 tickets Oh, so tickets you're going on the hookup so front. And then you can sell them for whatever you want. Yeah, we already made our money. You, you, sell them right. from, you, feel, so yeah. you buy them from us for like 10, 15 bucks. Right. And then you can sell them for 25 if you want. We don't right. care. That's or how five. That's how you make money. <laughs> or five. Right? Or give them away is yeah. what we wound Which up doing. Everyone ends up just doing. so people would just come. Yeah, and they, their bodies yeah. in for a bar. For yeah, so they end up making money off the off the reason people should be going there to give them money. <laughs> right. Which is a weird thing to do. And comedy built an empire on that stuff. Yeah. And so these, these alt rooms sort of freed that people up from that. Especially people whose acts weren't what people at those clubs' tastes were. So they could do, like, Mary Lynn's act was great, but really mm -hmm. weird. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, and, and Patton, who could do great club shows, but when he really got into doing I, the stuff he wanted to do, was at those kind of rooms. So when you, uh, uh, are you strictly uh, alt room, or are you just doing, are, have you ever, like, done? Uh, I have, yeah. Have you ever done comedy store type stuff? Yeah, I did yeah. the store actually last time yeah. I was out here. Yeah, well, then yeah. the other thing is, so you did, uh, last time you were out here, you did a number of good shows, and he was at the Meltdown. Yep. Right. yep, and you recorded your. I did an album. Album, yeah, but that room is so that room is the best room I've ever. I never had a bad set there. It's just like a great room, and the fact that it's in the back of a comic book store is almost irrelevant. Like it doesn't. It's just a nice little theater. There's a new little venue. It yeah, well, that's the difference the between the, the, your night tonight and the, and and that venue. Meltdown you, is there, there is there, yeah. yeah big time. We were you you did comedy. In a comedy, this was in a comic in the book store. store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, like, there was like a He-Man yeah. figure, like eight feet away from yeah. you. Yeah, this was in an actual comic. Book I, store. I was watching <laughs> the comics tonight, and behind you, I was basically like staring at like every action figure. Yeah, like right. it was like a Buffy it, one over here. It was like a rolling like, eBay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so open the window. My, uh, it, but there was that. What was funny is there was a box of Castle Grayskull. <laughs> That was so damaged that the flap was still open. Yeah. They didn't even tape it down. And it was three hundred three hundred dollars. I think there was a gray skull in it, not just the box. But no, 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 I hope there was yeah, a gray yeah, skull yeah. in it. Yeah, well that stuff sells like crazy. I you know, we've been trying to move out here or our plan is to move out here eventually. I know, I've been telling you to do I that know. for like two years. I know, and so I'm trying to Rachel, get on that. And she's working on it. I'm trying to slim down all the stuff I've acquired over the years. Right. And I don't just want to throw it out. I don't just want to dump it because some of it's of value, but I just more want it to go to people who were like psyched to have it. And uh, some of the stuff, though, that I did not think had any value, like I threw up on eBay and went for like a ridiculous amount of money. But that can fund the move. Yeah, well, that's funded this wink, trip. Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. wink, wink. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, wait. Let's go back. So who, do you have like a top one or two that's been on your podcast yeah. that were like, holy shit, I can't believe I'm talking <laughs> to this person, or this person was not what I expected? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of holy shit. I can't believe I'm talking to this person. Um, Elvira was my 150th episode. Oh, Cassandra's fantastic. She's amazing. That that was that was a big one because that that whole era of like the Groundlings and like Paul Rubens' Pee Wee Herman stuff, and mm -hmm. then just that whole group of people, plus the fact that she's like on a Tom Waits cover and new Elvis, like mm -hmm. that is cri like, and is such a nice, funny person. Yeah, Cassandra Pete is much deeper than yeah. her Mistress of the Night on Elvira on yeah. channel on my syndicated channel in your town. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, she was actually really cool. It's great. We had yeah. the same agent at like the same time for a while, and so I saw her all the time, and yeah. she doesn't look like Elvira. No, well, looks great. Yeah, 
She's a sweetheart too. Like she's an absolute nice. sweetheart. Yep. And just the like someone who knew Elvis alone. I'm like, that's not a real person you could just know. <laughs> like that's totally crazy to me. And like I did an episode with Ann Magnuson, and she's in The Hunger with, mm-hmm. with David Bowie. Oh, yeah. and, and so I'm like, you could, well, that's not a thing. Um, so those are really great. And I did one with Brenda Bennett, who was part of Apollonia Six. Um, mm-hmm. And and so like her story of working with Prince and all this stuff. So like those music ones, I'm just like, how. Is this a thing? Like, how are you in my house? You know, like, this is crazy. Those I, ones blow me away, too. Yeah. By the way, there's a whole Prince thing here in Illinois, like, last week that Epilonis showed up at. <laughs> yeah, showed up at a screening of Purple Rain. Oh, damn it. And they had, like, people. I was like, yeah. If there was one thing that I would go to, yeah. I would have gone into that. And I was so. I heard about it, of course, the day after. Well, here's uh-huh. the craziest thing about damn that. I, I recorded this episode with Brenda, who's from Rhode Island originally, which is how I knew her. And uh, it happened to come out the week that Vanity died. Denise died, just by happenstance. And so the day it came out, Apollonia called me. I never talked before. And was like, "What? You got a phone call from yeah, Apollonia?" Yeah. She's like, "She's like, you know, I listened to this episode with Brenda. I haven't talked to her in years. You know, it was really, can I have her number? Because so I, like, you know, I asked Brenda and he gave her a number. And then she flew out to the funeral. She wasn't going to go because she was like, I was going to send flowers or something. And then her and Apollonia went. Prince played that night. They went and got on stage. hadn't seen him in like decades, and then he died like two weeks later. It was just the weirdest oh. like, and I, the fact that I had the smallest involvement in that process at all was completely bizarre. Like that, that kind of stuff blew, blew me away. But that's something to hold on to. Like, that's kind of cool. It's so weird having consumed all that stuff growing up to have any sort of you know connection with it so that kind of stuff is is really cool right it's it's it's, it's, hard, it's interesting for me when i talk to like friends that like they know like about my past they know what i've done but like anytime we're watching television or uh mute something musical comes on or anything and i in my head i know i have a story yeah i you know i'm like oh i work with that person or like <laughs> right. I, or i know that person or like i've I know somebody that knows that person. I like there's some connection to something, and like, I'm, do I say something or do I? It's a uh, weird way because you have to much? find some perfect kind of yeah. segue. Right. And you don't want to seem like a name drop. But or like the a, thing like, is, right, to avoid that, of yeah. course. It, inevitably, they always go, "Tell us the damn story, Lambert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just save the time and get out." They're like, it. I can hear you gruffing I, and groaning yeah. over there. <laughs> I'm like, all right. This one time I was on Webster, <laughs> and Carla, Gucci. and I went through the secret clock, yes. you know, like, or the secret passageway through the grandfather clock. Oh, and they always ask me about the, the train. I went through that. The I, I used to hang out with all the stage games. next to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they showed their Paramount, right? Was that on Paramount lot? Yeah, they were on Web- stage twenty. Yeah, because I was on stage. 19. Oh wait, you're talking about Webster? Webster. Yeah. Oh no, I, okay, I was talking about uh, Silverstone. I, I you get just said the train. Though. I get yeah. them confused because I said the train and the video well, games. What else? You yeah. get Ricky Schroeder and Emmanuel Lewis confused. <laughs> He's not alone. That. That's America. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you just did an Emmanuel Lewis episode, I had right? the show, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. So, because we were talking about that a little bit. I mean, not to get too much of it, but that's right because I have always, I always loved Emmanuel Lewis. Yeah. And I was Emmy. for a year or so... <laughs> He means love, love, love. No, nah, oh, no. Nah. It's, it's coming out now. <laughs> I'm choosing uh, this time. It was, uh, I was Do on the stage next to the Webster. Website? Right, right. <laughs> stop. So you were right near stop, the... Stop, stop, too soon. <laughs> Alien versus Predator. Yes. So according, uh, according to <laughs> many, you were right near the solid gold stage as well. See those? Are but, the, it's like, oh my god! Right, like, but I used to go over and like see Emmanuel, like, hey, what's going on? Be like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, but, yeah. Because I was on a show, Mr. President, right next to the Webster stage. Yeah. Which the cooler part about being on stage nineteen at Paramount, which makes no sense to it, that's the Happy Day stage. Yeah, yeah. And my dressing room was Ron. My my the, where I had to go to school uh, was Ron Howard's dressing room. Yeah. So there's been. Hundreds of other people in these rooms too, but those ghosts are still there. That's fucking happy days. Yeah, and I was at I had Ron Howard's dressing room. Yeah, my school. that's really kind of cool. And oh, then you yeah. get to go to a store and see Webster. Yeah. yeah, he said he used to sneak. He said that he, um, Michael J. Fox would take him out to lunch most days. 
because he couldn't go anywhere apparently. And he would sneak to the. Well, he would get lost. And yeah, like, no yeah. Find him. Well, that was the weirdest thing. He was he was <laughs> talking to me in that episode. And he's a super nice kid, but I felt so bad for him because he he didn't get to do like kid stuff. Mm -mm. Because at first he was too small, and then once he started doing that stuff, he couldn't go anywhere. Right. Like there was a he's from Brooklyn, and he was going school shopping at some local store. And they shut the store down for him, but people gathered around chanting, we want Webster, and, like, smash the windows in. No, right. And he's, like, nine years, like, it's terrifying. Right. But they should be saying, we want Emmanuel Lewis, yeah. not we want Webster. Yeah. Webster doesn't fucking <laughs> exist. He's not a, well, I'll tell you the where he is. The Emmanuel that, Lewis. That's stage like, 19 in Paramount. <laughs> But he used to sneak into the solid gold set and like hide and watch them dance in there. Yeah. Shots. Well, also, <laughs> as a great story, if it, I know you remember this show being Ken TV aficionado, but I used to go to tapings of Dance Fever. Oh yeah, which was Danny a Terrio? phenomenal show with Danny, Danny fucking Terrio. Yeah. And He's I remember the guy one that night John Travolta had a dance for. Yeah, Terry that's Peter. absolutely right. Do you remember it's who so, replaced him? Oh, wait. Oh, it's Adrian's not Bert Condon. Yes, yes. Adrian's Men. Ew, wait. I know that. Ew, get it out of my brain. <laughs> no, I wish it was Because I went to an Adrian's Men oh, taping <laughs> because, of course, I was on TJ Hooker yep. with oh, right. Adrian's Men. <laughs> yep. And I, the only thing that I... I mean, Adrian's Men did Grease too. Just yep. don't. Right? Yeah. Just don't. But Adrian Men was a really nice guy. Yeah. But yeah, I went to both tapings. And I don't know why I remember this. But at Danny Terrio taping, his voice was gone. Like, he had hung out in cold weather somewhere, traveled. Danced it out. He could, and, like, there was, a, <laughs> there was a PA bringing him, like, mental, Hall's mentholiptus drops. And he had, like, six of them in his mouth the whole time. He was like, and we're back for him to Danny Terrio. And we're going to get Jackson and Milena yeah. next. Here we go. And he's like... <sighs> He took the fever part too seriously. Yeah, he had a fever on his too. <laughs> but I don't he know how I got that. Mouth. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. This episode brought by Hall's Mentholipus. Yes. Uh and Danny Terrio's no longer anything. No, <laughs> like, and he was all New Yorky too because he was not a. Oh, he, he was, was super a dance like, teacher, so he was just like. Hey, you guys! Dance. Well, he was the guy. He's like, Look, why you touch my hand? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. yeah. So it's so weird to be like that guy. Let's get him to host. Don't no, not dance. Talk. Who's the host? We don't <laughs> want to see his skill. Yeah. But everybody thinks like something like Dancing with the Stars is all new. It's not no. new. No. These are all things that have been done in different stuff. Lip They're just battles, ongoing. putting on the hits. Okay, look, putting on the hits. <laughs> uh, which was also a sideshow called Putting on, on the, the Kids. Kids. Yes. Which I was a celebrity judge. Were you a judge on it? I was a judge on it, and I voted for the kid. He was a little Rubenesque fellow okay. that did uh, the Big Bopper Chantilly Lace. Oh, well, I voted for him to nice. win. Beautiful. He I was have, fantastic. I have many episodes And they were of Tracy that show. and Randy Gold, by the way. Oh, I, oh, I have a Christmas it's, episode of that show where the Gold Sisters do Alvin and the Chipmunks songs <laughs> dressed as the Chipmunks. Why, why were these shows in existence? People watched but them. It, they did watch them. And that's when there was no channels yeah. back then. This was yeah. all like what? Putting on the kids. Those are both Saturday morning. Yeah, so it'd be like Saturday, Saturday afternoon. Saturday morning stuff. Yeah. Before Out of This World and Charles in Charge. <laughs> <laughs> Two other sets we were on all the time. <laughs> One set I used to get kicked off of daily. I'm guessing it's Out of This World? Or? No, no maybe Charles in Charge. Yes. Yeah, the Nicole Eggert show? Yeah, well, well, Nicole and I are friends, and I used to go and hang out, but uh, Bayo didn't like us very much. I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bayo didn't like you. Bayo yeah. didn't like me. Look, yeah. we did Ralph Capaccio last week. Yeah. We can't say Scott I think it's fine to say Scott Bayo didn't like you. Because Scott Bayo didn't like you. Um, Did he um, tell you? That? I could picture him being like, look, I don't like you. No, he, was just like, he would open the door and go, didn't just say, get out. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was in charge. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I'm Charles. I'm in charge. Get out. <laughs> Will you, oh, was, so much Willie, take care of my life. Wait, I, I'm me. just picturing kids running rampant all over it sets, was, all over the it place. Was. Well, okay, well, it was. Well, like where else are you going to go? No, yeah. it was like that then. I, I'm telling you, and it's, I guarantee it's not like that now. Um, it, it, there was we had, there was a lot of uh, close knit friends, and we just kind of hung out on each other's sets. Like if we weren't going to school or if we weren't doing something else, we would just go and hang out. And a lot of us were shooting next to each other, so. You know, I was shooting this show over here, and I'd walk over here and hang out on this set, you know, just because I was on a break or something. Because that's what, like, when what I was on yeah. stage 19 of Paramount, this is right when Star Trek Next Generation started. Right. 
and of, and of course Will was with, <laughs> we know you were only, yeah like, well we have to tell the story like you were like almost Wesley Crusher I think I told the story yeah, was on, on, on that show yeah, so okay we'll just leave yeah. so check out Ryan's reference episode. what episode is it Ryan Lambert TV yeah. guidance counselor yeah. how Ryan was almost Wesley Crusher <laughs> but I had known Will of course and they were on the other side of the lot and so uh, I would ride my bike over to because they had like two or three stages or something. it's huge yeah yeah and they had a lot and the show had just started and what was the first year of next 86. generation 86 86 so this was like second season or something yep and will was there and i'd go hang out with will and go hey what's going on and be like hey what's going on and because we both talked like that yeah at that time, that's very accurate but i remember being like i went on the bridge of the f- enterprise yeah which people pay a lot it, of money to do now you're going to a fake bridge <laughs> yeah, of the enterprise yeah, yeah. And like I was the I as met opposed to the the real one in the space that you were on. Yeah. <laughs> I went into no, space was real, every but, week. I, <laughs> fuck you, and you. But <laughs> I was on the real one in the costume. <laughs> I was actually wearing the costume on the fake Which real I, bridge. That, that's the only on the thing I don't <laughs> like about Next Generation is someone should have shot the costumer in the head. Yeah, they're very Those bad just for you because everybody has to pull down the. T- come on. Yeah. Yeah. In a onesie? It's like you're a, wearing a onesie. It's There's like the future like equivalent of mom jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I just watched three episodes last night, so I, I can't say anything. But, but uh, I the... met Patrick Stewart in the makeup trailer. Yeah, just hanging out. And because uh, Will was like, "Hey, this is this is Patty. Wait, this is this is Patrick Stewart." And I was like, "Oh, hey." He's like. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm Patrick Stewart. Nice to meet you. You're like, I, I like, love Life Force. Whoa, this guy's really cool. <laughs> Which is really funny because, like, the couple weeks ago, I was looking at it going, how old was Patrick Stewart when Next Generation? And I looked it up and I was like, well, goddamn, he was like two, he was like two years older I than I am right now. <laughs> but he's and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. He was. He looked old when he was young, and looks younger You're, than he's old. He, he went he to an age and stopped. He stopped at that age. He looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Blunt, Blunt talks a very funny show. It's one, I love it. I can't wait to come back on. Uh, See, I just picture. First of all, it's already dangerous for children to be riding around a lot because, for the most part, a lot is what ninety percent job site. So it's like guys <laughs> hammering and there's nails and equipment everywhere and like high voltage electricity. Yeah, but so we fully alone, knew we like we were so we, we knew like it was like an obstacle course. Right, right. You step yeah, over this totally cable, knew, you don't touch knew this. Knew exactly where everything was and who everybody was. And yeah, what, that guy does that, so make sure you don't go near that. Right, like, move yeah. over here and move over this way. And yeah, yeah. and there's the things snake you know regular. not to touch. <laughs> yeah. There's a snake right there, yeah. That's a, that's a different set. Yeah, one of them but, was yeah. the solid gold dancer. Do not touch that. Do not touch Danny Cherio's snake. Yeah, don't, touch my, don't touch my hair. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the money. He touches my hair. Uh, another one mind. degree. So, Saturday Night Fever. I'm going to come back to yeah, yeah. Next Generation. Fair amount. But his buddy, I can't remember the character name, is an actor named Paul Pape, mm-hmm. who plays the tall, good-looking, kind of funny guy in the crew. I'm fr- I know Paul Pape. He's the nicest guy because he was friends, because they're all from New York. Yeah. And one of my favorite people on the planet, and I think you and I have talked about Peter Scolari. Yeah, oh yeah, a little bit. absolutely, yeah. And because coming off of Bosom Buddies, Peter Scolari was the talented one that yeah. the network gave a show to him. Who's this Tom Hanks guy off of Bosom Buddies, which is actually a good show. And Adrian but, Zemed was top billed in Petrol Party over Tom Hanks. Uh, over Tom Hanks, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Pre TJ Hooker, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, but Peter's fr- was friends with this guy named Paul Pape, who was an actor right here, and he's in fucking Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, it's a big and deal. And I watch him, I'm like, that's Paul. Yeah. And like, I've played so far, and I met these guys, it's great. And it, it's just this weird, small world. It's much smaller than it, you could imagine. And that's what I really discovered right. talking to all you guys out here, how like everyone really does know each other. It's a, such a smaller world, which is crazy because this stuff gets made. It is everywhere, but it's this. It, but it's tiny in this core little people. tiny bubble, and like on Paramount, I because I, you know we've talked. I'm a Ryan. I'm a basketball player. I play basketball in college and yeah, after yeah. stuff. But uh, at lunchtime, the, like Paramount had a basketball court in the middle of the lot, uh, and there's a bunch of like flats and scene and decorate yeah. set deck. Where shit. would you like to play basketball today on Gilligan's <laughs> Island? <laughs> 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 Gilligan. Swap them out. I went on the internet. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but it was this nice half court, and people like. It would be, this was what's great about lunchtime on a lot at Paramount is, because you'd go to the commissary and have great food, and you would go play hoop for an hour, but it would be like a bunch of gaffers, some grips, 
some transpo dudes, Woody Harrelson, <laughs> and Gary David Goldberg. Yeah. Who, Gary David Goldberg, the producer, was the best spot up three point. He never fucking missed. He's a Brooklyn and guy. And then Woody Harrelson fancied himself a basketball player. But he can't jump. And, but no, he can't. <laughs> yeah, you still can't jump. And uh, but we would play pickup games all yeah. the time. And like Woody had just, I mean, it had been what a season or two on uh, eighty six. It would have been two seasons. Yeah, on two Cheers. seasons in the yeah. Cheers, which was down the street. I can't remember the stage or something. But yeah, Woody Harrelson, who was probably what. 20 something probably yeah Early coming 20s. out of his small and then I'm you know 14 and we're playing pickup ball we're like an odd mixture it, of people <laughs> no it's like a bunch of grips a transpo guy and like a security guard Woody Harrelson and me right playing pickup hoops on Paramount and it's just <laughs> like who gets to do that shit that sounds like if you would describe that to me as a dream you had I'd be like that's a messed up dream man. Oh, that's right. no <laughs> it's <laughs> happened that's yeah. good so what happens when you work in an office and you take a break and you go outside, and there's a hoop outside, and the security guard comes over, but also the vice president comes out, right? And like the guy from yeah, the, from the yeah. office, it's the, the same thing. In like the mayor of the town, admin, administration, <laughs> the, you know, the, you know the, ad, yeah. the admin assistant comes out, and it's, they, just, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, Woody Harrelson's like the admin assistant. <laughs> yeah, Woody Harrelson's the admin he's assistant. The, he's the janitor. Yeah, because well, I, you know, coming from having not worked in any of, of that stuff, and especially as a kid. When I picture what it was like hanging out on these sets, what I picture is walking around in Ikea where there's just fake rooms everywhere and you're like, I'm just going to hang out in this kitchen. That's not a kitchen. <laughs> or something like that. Or like but getting in a bed that's in like a furniture it is, store. Right? It is like that, except it's weird because it's like, uh, you know, it, you're only working on one set, right. you're part of a set. So that's like, that set's lit and ready to go and like, and then it's lunch. But if you want to go hang out on another press set, it's... Pitch a black. struck set, yeah. There's nothing. There might be like <laughs> other parts of other pieces of other parts of the set in that kitchen area or something. You're right. So like, also, they, they so wheeled they wheeled the couch from the living room <laughs> into you know the you know the. Uh, so it's like a closed walk. IKEA under construction. It, 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 right, right. But like the to that thing when I did, um, I was on Young and the Restless for like two years uh, as a nine and ten year old. Yeah. As all nine and ten year olds. Are you on were soaps. young and restless. I was young. I was the young and the <laughs> restless one. And uh, okay, so this is at CBS Television City, and the Price is Right is on the stage across the hall. Mm. Now the Price is Right stage, for you who don't know, is super fucking tiny. Yeah, like there's only a few rows of seats. It just looks bigger on TV. Mm. And they run down. Come on down, and it's only it's not that far. It's two steps. It's not that far. <laughs> and uh, so all of the set stuff, like. The yodelay, the the mountain climber, the plinko, and oh the fucking wheel are all out in the hallway. Yeah, yeah. like it's like the this is like the the trash heap until they need like it under the bed, and it doesn't look as good in real life as it does on television. It's all like scotch tape and sequins and shit. Yeah. But I was on Young and the Restless set, which a soap set's totally different and weird. But the Price is Right wheels right there. Did you spin it? Damn right! I spun the fucking thing. I spun the shit out of that wheel. <laughs> it just doesn't go. Bloop, 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 bloop. It goes click, 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 click. Because I picture them hiring a guy behind the wheel that went on spin it. He has a mic. He's just like. There's guaranteed a mic and a thing and an audio thing. It just yeah. goes click, 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 click. Oh yeah. I've jumped up there. I've I've slung a plinko a plinko thing. That hell yeah makes yeah. a lot of noise. And I'm, I'm like, oh shit, I better get out of here. I, it's, it's just, just sitting girl. in the hallway, which is cr- like, like this is so crazy. crazy. It's like you running on to like you know the who's the boss set or no I you know all Charles and Charge like we just just that was your afternoon. What did Tony Danza Jeopardy, think of you? Jeopardy. Oh, you broke the buzzer. I broke the buzzer on Jeopardy. Me and Rasan Patterson broke because you were over at. Uh, uh, Sony, Sony, and we uh, no, 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 Sunset no, no. Gower. Before Sony. Sunset Gower. Yeah, Sunset Gower. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we were on, uh, yeah, right next to us. Yeah, was see, that's Jeopardy. what that's the one thing I'm jealous of you of <laughs> yeah. is that you were on the Jeopardy side. Yeah. Trebek does not screw around though. I bet he's still looking for you. That's my like, dream. That's like my dream job, by the way. If anybody's Trebek listening, Trebek had me where he wanted me <laughs> like, because my son went to school with his, uh, I think his son or daughter, and uh, he was a, 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 my son was on the football team and. He, and Trebek was a barker on the side of the... Oh, God. He was a barker. Come on, Scream! Rob. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Wearing, like, a Navy baseball hat. And, like, I stood next to him like this, and he's like, which one's your son? And I'm like, Zoe. And he's like, 
there's no girl out there. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my son's name is Zoe. And he's like, which one is he? Come on, Zoe. Come on. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, hey, calm down a little bit, man. Just like, they're just kids yeah. just hanging out. I was that dad. I'm like, just chill out, man. And he so was he, like, so he didn't be like, come on, ref. What is a terrible <laughs> fucking call? I was going to say, does he, a, yeah, all sorry. things must be answered in the form of question to him. Which one's your kid? Who is Zoe? Who is Zoe? <laughs> That's why he No, I'm registered. sorry. And yeah. I went to Trebek. Broke your buzzer, bro. <laughs> you told him? Did you tell him? No. Oh, oh you no. should have told him because he would have been like, what? <laughs> that would have been like telling someone you sunk a battleship. Like, like it's like a mic oh. truck. Oh. Yeah. Broke Besides sink my battleship, my favorite is... I won. Where? Here. Diagonally. Yes. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Connect Four. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. My, I, I wanted to hunt down. Connect Four is a Parker brother, Milton Bradley Parker's brother game, and it was in Salem, Mass. They had this giant uh, board game factory. This is as close as I got to show up as, as a kid. It was like <laughs> to the board Wonka, game yeah, factory. It was like Willy Wonka, but for board games wow. in Salem, Mass. And so we would go once a month when I was a kid, and they'd put us in a room with two-way mirrors, which made me feel like I was in Firestarter. And uh, <laughs> we'd play with these like test games or Stranger Things. Yeah, and then tell them what we thought of the games, and then they'd give us fifty dollars. But all the kids on the covers... 50 like, bucks back 50 then? 50 bucks, yeah. For, a, for like a, two hours of playing none of the game. The only game we ever tested that actually came out was a terrible game called Pig Pong. And you had hey. these... You had, it was it wow. was like tennis, but you had these rubber pigs you squeeze. Oh, and, and you they squeeze the, the ball out. Out. Yeah, yeah. I, kn- awesome. I know that game. Yeah. No, it's terrible. It's terrible. It never works. No, and it's the terrible. air out of the pigs just stinks, like, even when it's new. Because it's that old... Yeah, like, stale... rubber yeah. mold. Yeah, it's it's like gross. stale rubber yeah. Yeah. air. Yeah. So all kids would do is just squirt each other in the face with the thing. But uh, <laughs> all the kids that were uh, the models on the cover of all the board games we grew up with were all just not even model kids. They were just kids from Massachusetts. Yeah. So they didn't have to pay them, of course. Yeah, so, like... For some dummy from Massachusetts walks into a Toys R Us and there's 40,000 floor-to-ceiling pictures of their face. Of pig pong. <laughs> They're really bizarre, yeah. They're like, hey, you're the pig pong kid. The pig pong kid. <laughs> like, punch. Yeah. And be like, y'all fucking connect four. Well, what, what was the first year of TV Guides? TV Guides, well, pre-national is before 1953 was when they were all regional companies. So there were TV Guides in the mid-40s in some markets. But... Actual, right. well, what we actually know. Actually, what we know is TV Guide Post National is about 1957. Oh, that's still pretty long. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Who yeah. was on the first cover? Who was on the first cover? Oh, I don't ooh, know. Ooh. That's a good question. We just yeah. stumped. Stumped. can't yeah. read. Yeah. That's yeah. The yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I, I forget who was on the very first cover. 1957? Uh, it was 57. 57? Was yeah. it like Ricky Nelson? I mean, it could have been like Ricky it Nelson. It could have been. It might have been Phil Silvers. Uh, there was probably... Lucy was on a lot of I covers. was going to say Lucy. But, <clears throat> but it was a lot of like more obscure people that like, eh. you just didn't even know. Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which Lucy? Who do you mean? Uh... <laughs> 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 Interesting, we're talking about television history, which mm-hmm. I know you enjoy, and I hate to harken back to shit that we do, but that's no, what please do. do. We talk about ourselves. You've done things, uh, <laughs> and we talk about Stage Nineteen on that show, Mr. President. Yeah. So this show, of course, was George C. Scott, Madeline yeah. Kahn, and Conrad. Don't Bain. forget Conrad Bain, who was actually funnier than everybody. Did you ever meet his twin brother? Uh, but I think they just swapped on me. And okay, you never do. Um, but boom. boom. Bum but um bum man. You haven't watched Mad <laughs> no, yet. I you watch. have to watch that. The it's Mad so Fucking bad. You've seen my oh, math. Oh, of course math. you've seen it's math. It's so math. bad. We'll talk about that later. It's one of the better math nights, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> it's not that bad, but I'm terrible in it because I didn't understand what I was supposed to be fucking doing. It is and a I little, didn't get it. Yeah, probably was I a little hard to, yeah. I didn't get it. If someone had instructed me, I would have mimicked it. It would have been fine. But on Mr. President, uh, it started out as single... It was a comedy, but single camera, uh, which was kind of new back then anyway. Yeah, yeah. But then they switched it up and got rid of the mom... Yeah, uh, because I guess she didn't test well, and nobody liked her. How but did she they was, write her out? I don't remember. Did they kill her? She no. She just like I can't be the president's wife. Oh, I like that. I'm happens. gonna leave and go back home. Yeah. And um, did they switch to three camera live audience? Yeah. More sitcom format, and brought in, of course, Madeline Kahn, Kahn, which is ridiculously who's supposed to be his funny. sister. And, uh, no, the wife's sister. That's I think. what so, I thought. Yeah, so that's, that's just weird. So, like, you need to get into a th- like, oh, let's get into that thing. Yeah. And uh, it, they never did. But uh, it, uh, I don't know where I was going with this. But uh, the, the where, sec- where did we start? Uh, the stage 19, uh, television the, history, 
You're on, Mr. President. You got you got all these people there. <laughs> God damn it. Madeline Kahn. Tell us how to do a podcast, Ken. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what can you imagine? Please tell us how to do a No, I had a point. I was leading to something, and I just lost I'll it. I'll stall for you. Okay. While, could you imagine a sitting president... His wife leaves him, and his wife's sister moves into the White House. <laughs> That's right. And everybody's perfectly okay with it. But if she's as funny, as hot as Madeline Kahn, it's all fine. They're all like, I get it. It's all <laughs> fine. Yeah. Yeah. Andre no Gower's there for some reason. Yeah. He's, <laughs> and he keeps calling the president daddy. Just and Mr. Drum- and Mr. Drummond. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Drummond's our And the dude from Maud. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Who is basically the same the thing? Bill Macy? Bill Macy was on that? Conrad Bain. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was on Mod. Yeah, I forgot. Oh, he was on Mod. Yeah. Who was he on, who was he he was on the Mod? He was the antagonistic Republican guy that yes. was coming out. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've watched I'm, enough Mod. I, I love still Bill don't Macy. remember where I was Bill going Macy's while William H. Macy's called William H. Macy. Because <laughs> Bill Macy was already in the union. Right, so he had Bill to Macy was, he had to put yeah. the H in there. Yeah. Best decision he ever yep. made. Yep. Um... Bill Macy from Revere, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah? That's why he has that horrific accent. <laughs> oh, come on, Maud. <laughs> <laughs> Him and the dad from Willy Wonka, um, the yeah. grandfather, were, were from, Check. grew up together in, like, the same town in Massachusetts. Wow. They, I can't remember his name, though. Jack, yeah, like, yeah. Jack Albert. Jack Albertson. Al- Albertson? Albertson. Co- Toastone? Jack Albert. It might be Albertson? Jack Albert. Toastone? Yeah. To- Cock Toastone. Cock Toastone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How He's many here? were there? Two. two. John Cocktoast. Um, okay. Did you ever see the movie Dead? Do you have a towel? My uh, car hit a water bottle. <laughs> um, anyway, let's not go flat. We right? go full flat. <laughs> like, go, he you went never full flat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So what happened to Jason Lee? Went full flat. <laughs> disappeared. Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> That's actually my no, favorite thing in the whole movie. I have which was favorite. a visual joke and yeah. no one could see. It was very well executed. Doesn't matter. Yes, very well executed. He said the line. He said the line. Yeah. The dad from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yes, Uncle. Phil. Uncle Phil. Also Shredder on Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> Two very key roles he had. That's another thing like on um I still don't know where I was going with my story. It'll come back to It'll you. It'll come back. Maybe tomorrow. But well, yeah, that's we were fine. talking about things like people we work with and people can't believe it and like the things come to me and we're watching television and I'm like, oh fuck, I what I can't believe I worked I can't, yeah. I totally don't remember that, but like I worked with a lot of people on Kids Incorporated. They came through there as guest stars. Like I mean, Philip Bailey. Yep. Like the lead singer of fucking Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> yeah. like, Wait, I know what? that guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Um, Gwen Verdon, who probably a lot of people don't know, but she was like married to Bob Fosse, and like was like mm. uh, one of the fir- uh, she was the first person in like Damn Yankees on Broadway. She was super famous. My dad's my grandmother, my dad's mother. That was her hero, like her hero. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, like, eh, she she had been there. dead. She'd been dead since I was four years old. My dad, like, she showed up on set and was like bawling bawling i'm like what's wrong she's like i you don't understand who this person like, is my, you're the That's woman awesome. the woman who is playing your grandmother you're it, dancing with her you are but, dancing with the most famous dancer in the world like she was like she was lola yeah she was like like she, <laughs> and i'm like i don't know who the fuck this yeah. person is it's my oh grandma. great this is, yeah. my, this is my fake grandma yeah. it's a fake some, grandma my some dad, day my, player my standing off some the, day play right i don't know the side <laughs> bawling going you're you're my mother I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe this was yeah happening. yeah i watch seinfeld all the time like uh seinfeld's dad played an angel on jesus <laughs> corporate oh yeah <laughs> it's so yeah Jerry stiller <laughs> Who's no, one no, of no, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, oh, Seinfeld's dead. Seinfeld's dead. Oh, Seinfeld's dead. 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 Seinfeld's dead.
They yeah. drive up to the to the stage. They just open the door, kind of push him in, and he goes, ah, 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 does this thing, and then they just put him back in the, and like, you they don't tell him what he's there 100% for. 100% not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you, are, you have, you've nailed it. That is exactly what happened. Because he doesn't care what it is. He's doing the same thing. It's a different shirt. That's Where's the paycheck? The, yeah. Like, uh, here's a story. This is a quick story with a band that I, uh, a la Richard Simmons? recorded with. <laughs> Reco- a band I recorded with in um, New York. Um, Carlos Alomar is producing the record. Um, He's uh, David Bowie's guitar player. Um, and we needed an organ player. And he said, I know a guy. I know a guy. Um, the next day, Paul Schaefer walks in. <laughs> <laughs> and and he, 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 the organ's all set up. It's ready to go. He says, play me the track. So we play the track, you know. And he, he goes, I love it. Play it again. Hit record. Whittle lip, blah blah blah. He does his thing, and bam, he goes. What do you think? We play it back. We're like, uh, amazing. That sounds Perfect. great. He goes, okay, great, uh, great track, guys. You guys are great. We let, let's take a picture. We took a picture with him. He goes, you want to come to Letterman tonight? He, uh, Dave doesn't want you to sit in the audience. He doesn't like my guests sitting in the audience. But you can <laughs> sit backstage in the green room, and like that's fine. Uh, I think Cracker's playing tonight, so you can come down and see Cracker play. And we're like, uh, okay, I okay. guess. And then um, I'm off to the side with my bass player, and we're like, can we? Can you believe this is happening? We look over, and Paul Schaefer does like the little finger money sign to the producer. <laughs> He's like, so how mu- how much are you paying? You know, how much are you giving me? Yeah. And Carlos Alomar pulls an uh, uh, envelope out of his uh, suit jacket and hands it to him. And he leaves. And I said, how much did you give him? He says, 300 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much it costs to get a Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer for 20 minutes. Yeah. Wait, you mean the Paul Schaefer that wrote It's Raining Men? Yeah. I got it. I got, I got the Paul. <laughs> Who's still making money Oh, already. God. Yeah, so it's probably the most money he's made off anything. And just for those keeping score at home, I still don't remember what the fuck I was talking about. Eventually you will. No, I don't know, I don't know. I think it was leading to a Madeline Kahn story. It was a a television history story. I believe believe it was a set story. Like, we're next to this. Like, you look on the back of a flat and it says the honeymooners on it. You know, something like that. (laughs) That would have been great. Yeah. Okay, here's a story. Here's Here's a question for you, Andre. Okay. So you, obviously, there was an Oval Office set. Yes. Which I believe I, I was went to or something. I mean, I, you probably Yeah, did. I think I, we, I was there with you. But um, when you see other Oval Office sets on TV now. Right. Westwood. What's the comparison? Like, do you see any similarities? Did they, how close did you guys get? I th- was it of the time? Or was it just I like think kind the of thing a that I remember, together? Like the Oval Office was okay, but it was a sitcom, so it was cut in half the wrong way, so it's, you don't get that same view, but... The like the press room where you have the the press conferences in the White House. Right. In reality, it's actually a really tiny room. Yeah. It like they stick forty people in a room that has room for like eighteen, but it, and they have a little endless as the White House. Like it's the thing. Like the the presidential the seal. sign. The presidential seal bag says the White House, and all the government things look right. The State Department looks the same. Well, they recreated one for the the show. That's sitting in my mom's closet. <laughs> <laughs> just in case she has to address just, America. Just in at case some she point. need like like I need a backdrop. Like the doing the, right now. the chain of succession to the government completely fucking implodes. She's doing Skype It'll be, interviews. It, it's up to Dorothy. Yeah, it's up to Dorothy to stand up and go. Well, I'm not a politician, <laughs> and I don't know what I'm doing. But my son played the president's son on television. <laughs> So I guess it's up to you me. You see the goddamn <laughs> seal behind me? That says I have president. The seal. It's official, made by a union sign guy yeah. on Paramount. <laughs> Dorothy would probably totally do it. Too. Did you <laughs> take it? Was it offered? It was. To it you? was offered. It was offered. Does um, that happen a lot? Like when they're when they're destroying a set or striking a set? Yeah, whatever the some, less uh, unless they have to keep be. stuff because of like copyright shit or something. You know, but usually if they're just throwing it out, you're like, it's trash. But it's fun to steal shit. Too. Yeah, from other people's sets. Oh, stole... see, I never did that. Oh, man. Uh, I, I feel like I've stole a bunch of shit from other people's sets, but I definitely stole from my own sets. I've got, I've got stuff. You still have? I've got some stuff. Some a sequin stuff. jacket. I do have a sequin. You have a sequin <laughs> jacket? Well, I have. Well, no, I don't have a. Se- I don't have one that was like worn on camera, but I have my my crew jacket, which is very shiny. 
Yeah. Oh, the, sat- oh, the satin, satin. Yeah, the satin embroidered like ones. Yeah. So here's a question I have about crew jackets. Crew jackets. So I have yes. a large collection of cast and crew jackets oh, really? at home that I've gotten for for shockingly little money. Yeah. Um, and 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 that was like one of the first things I collected um, when I found out you could like obtain these things. Mm-hmm. And I just assume nobody ever wears them because because they're. Why would someone wear them? I don't know why they give them out because no one really wears. They used yeah. to be like a badge of honor. Walk around. I work yeah. on the show. Yeah. But it was like a hat. I have the coolest one I have is from Parker Lewis, Can't Lose, and it's a varsity jacket. So it's like a cool yeah. varsity jacket. And it just yeah. says like class of ninety one and it's like weirdly subtle. And it's right. like a leather it's like a nice varsity jacket. It doesn't say Parker Lewis on it? No. It's just oh, the inside, really but it's just class know. of ninety one. Yeah. Um and I think there's a little Parker Lewis emblem like on the sleeve. Right. But then I have one from like uh what's the what's the silliest oh Miami Vice. And it's like even in 1985, if you wore that, people would be like, "Oh, it's a nutcase!" Like it look, it's like shiny silver with like lights coming off it, and like nobody would ever, especially like a grip. Some guy was like, batteries in "Yeah, he's been like a big union yeah. transport guy." I wear denim and uh, sometimes denim. Like he's got this like silver Klaus Nomi, like Canadian weird, tuxedo. Yeah, yeah, the like, Canadian tuxedo. Canadian tux. And I'm like, no one's wearing. What are what, yeah. are what are things you're collecting? Um, so I have a few less of those now, but it was those were like the big like things from movies. And the other thing I have are um, parking placards from yes, TV those shows. are fantastic. I have, a t- I have one from Revenge of the Nerds set. I have one from Spencer for Hire that I always am tempted to try this. I, they shot that in Boston for three years. I'm like, I think I could park anywhere in Boston with this in my car and no still, one question it. Yeah. Still. Like, just pull up on a guy in a wheelchair in a handicapped spot in front of City Hall and they'd be like, hey, oh, he's with Spencer. Like, That's it was right. like 30 years it's ago. like, I'm Robert Urich standing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm killing. My favorite thing about Spencer for Hire is there's a lot of scumbags in Boston. But not nearly enough to warrant how many he killed every episode. He did because kill a lot. He killed like forty henchmen every. And week. Hawk fucked up a lot of oh, guys yeah. too. I'm what like, a great show! We'd have no criminals. There's nobody <laughs> left. Boston was totally cleaned up by Decimated. like eighty seven, right? Yeah, yeah. the two of them <laughs> took everyone out. So I have a few of those, I've and never then seen I one episode. You never seen those? No, one it's episode. actually really good. I only watched it because that was a ten p.m. show, right? Yeah, yeah. And I stayed because every once in a while, if I could stay awake, that was one of my dad's favorite shows. And, it's a good show. Uh, it holds it's up. It's actually not bad. And I love Rubber Rubber. Yeah, Rubber Rubber's yeah, great. I was a SWAT fan from even earlier, and he was great. And yeah. Hawk was amazing. Oh, yeah. And Spencer. my other dad, my dad's other favorite show was The Equalizer. Yeah. And I've never seen would. one episode. Oh, my God. The Equal. <laughs> they, well, they made a movie out of with Denzel, Shot which actually awesome. wasn't bad. Yeah. But The Equalizer, the show, was good because it, it was this guy that went around and, like, Righted wrongs, but like he was a former black up. ops like yeah. wet works guy. Yeah, who had a change of heart. But he was like, British, and he was yeah. like, "I'm just going to help people." Yeah, the Denzel movie's not terrible. No, I watch it when it's on, and it's got um, Chloe Grace Moretz in it. <laughs> Don't tell your wife. Yeah, I know. She, she, <laughs> Chloe Grace Moretz is not why on do you my watch list. it when it's on? She's not. On, I watch it because Denzel's really Denzel. good in it. Yeah, that's why. But and it's my dad's favorite show. Yeah. So, but uh, and the the Equalizer and. Spencer for Hire, my dad loved those shows. They're they were such shows my they dad. They hold up. They're like some of the few 80s action shows that really they're hold a, up. They're a little bit... They're gritty. Uh, uh, gritty, ahead of their time. Uh, almost like the one show that I did that should have made it, Heart but of the it City. didn't. Heart, yeah, Heart of the City. So it was kind of like that. Yeah. I think Heart of the City's probably... It was based in L.A. Yeah. But they tried to make it... He's a night shift homicide detective... But you can't make look. You can't make L.A. look shitty during the day. Yeah. It's like it's really yeah. hard to do. There's a few movies Boston and watch. New York look like shit at any time. Oh, of the day. So you got, they had to it's clean like, them up to make them look shitty. Neighborhood during the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you shitty during the know, day. That's what I, but, I but yeah, but they, they, I just saw them shooting a crime show in my neighborhood. <laughs> Was it a crime show? Or just and there, wasn't even, there, was no, there wasn't even a lighting crew. Yeah. They just said, fuck it. It looks yeah. great. Yeah. It was it. actually a documentary. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, and this is really hard for me to obtain, but you guys may have some of these sorts of things that you've kept, is screen-worn stuff. So, like, I have a screen-worn tri shirt from the first Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, my God. I'm like trying to recreate kind of this. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah, I have oh. a frame and a T-shirt frame in my house. Um, and it's embroidered in like a cool, like screen worn shirt, and I can, you know, I can watch the scene that it's in, like that kind of stuff is is uh, I, the only screen war thing I have is stuff from uh, Monster Squad. Do you have the the shirt? I have the shirt. I have the jacket. I have yeah. the yellow. I have the 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 bad Levi's, and I have the Stan Smith Adidas. Yeah. Um, 
And fuck, one of the worst stories that pains me to all get out is you don't have your jacket anymore. I had the jacket. Yeah, I mean, you don't have it anymore. You don't have it now. I had the jacket. (laughs) (laughs) And the other thing that pains me is Ashley Bank, who played Phoebe, um, who, ironically, is not five anymore. Really? Um, her like her mom got rid of scraps. Oh, oh! Can you imagine what people take a picture with scraps today? I mean, it's this will make you feel better. They're uh, Rankin Bass, um, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody loves that. Everybody yeah. watched it. Uh, stop motion. There were little wax figures. This guy in Rhode Island, his mother worked for Rankin Bass, and she was a secretary or something. When they were done filming that, they were like, hey, you kids want these things? Gave her all the puppets. Oh, all of them. Yeah. From Holy the shit. iconic thing. They were up in the attic. The kids would play with them. He had three <laughs> left. Uh, he brought them on Antiques Roadshow, and a guy I know is the expert on Antiques Roadshow, so he actually saw them. And he's like, these are the puppets from the thing. He's like, yeah. And he's like, where are the rest of them? He goes, oh, we had them there, and they melted. We threw them away. We played with them. And like those three... And you think he had something like over 40 at one point. Uh. We're like $40,000. <laughs> and it was so weird. And he's like, and he told him that. And he was like, uh, uh, like they're like lighting him on fire as kids, you know, and playing with like what? Bionic Man. Same exact story. Because we, I went to a DGA screening of a movie called Revenge of the Jedi. Not a Italian-made ripoff of Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Before they changed the title. And if you were a kid that was on the guest list and got invited, you got a swag bag. And it had some like stuff in it, like a poster and a button and a toy. And I still have the button. So the button with the thing, Revenge of the Jedi, I had that button. But there was also a toy in there. And I think I've told... I don't know yeah, if I've told you the story. The other day, yeah. There's a... Uh, it was a ship, a toy, in a box, blister pack type thing. All the artwork. It's a ship that doesn't exist. It looks similar to the Imperial Cruiser that they land on the Endorian moon, which is supposed to be the Wookiee planet of Kashyyyk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Lucas decided to swap out the Wookiees for the Ewoks. But it's a ship and has a cannon at the front. The wings come down. looks like the shitty, you know, rebel blocky ship. And on the box says Revenge of the Jedi from Kenner, ages four and up. And of course, my ten-year-old dumbass goes home and breaks open the package and plays with the ship for like two years. But what weird kid wouldn't do that? I, but I, I was weird. Thanks. No, but the opposite. Was, you would be weird if you if didn't I didn't. Open. Yes. Yeah. If I had the like, if you give a ten-year-old a toy, but like, I can't I'm not gonna imagine. Touch Oh, that what would be that worth. in? If I left that in the package yeah. and today, of course you don't know it's even the box you could sell for something. Holy good. shit! Yeah, I have no idea what to put a number on that. Yeah, because not only is it a thing for this is revenge. There's some sort of other, but this ship doesn't even exist yeah. in the universe. And it's from a screening. Like you, you could even the box you would get good money. Oh, and with that, Andre goes to wallow in the world of what might have been, and we come to the end of part one of our hangout with Ken Reed. Keep an eye out for part two of Ken's squad cast visit and more randomness with Andre and Ryan. Uh, check out ryanandandre.com for past episodes, cool merch, and great photos of our hair. Squadcast. Bow, 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 bow,